In this mini lecture, we're going to look at several examples of evaluating discrete time convolution using graphical principles. And we can write the convolution of a signal x with a signal h as this infinite sum. So if y is the convolution of h with x, then that's the sum from k equals minus infinity to infinity, h of k, x of n minus k. And we've previously looked at a, an approach for evaluating this convolution sum. We basically are going to graph h of k, and then we're going to form x of n minus k as sort of the input to this convolution factory. So we take x of minus k, we shift it by n to get x of n minus k. Then we're going to form the product of x of n minus k and h k. And then in our third step, we're going to evaluate the sum over all k of the values in this product. And that will give us the value y at time n. Now to get y at another time, later we will then increment n and we'll go back through this process. So we'll shift x, form the product, sum all the values in the product, and then we'll increment n, and so on. So the example that I want to begin with is we're going to find y is the convolution of h and x, and x is the signal u of n plus 5 minus u of n minus 6. And these are unit step functions, so this one starts at minus 5, so the signal turns on, goes from 0 to 1 there, and this one starts at time 6, so I'll have 1 minus 1, x times 6, and thereafter, giving me 0. So this x is a string of values of 1 between minus 5 and plus 5. Now h of n, I'm going to let it be 1 quarter at time n equals 0 and n equal 1, and then minus 1 quarter at times n equals 2 and 3, and 0 otherwise. So first we're going to graph x of k. As I said earlier, it's just a value 1 between minus 5 and 5 for k, and it's zeros otherwise. So then when I reflect this, this is an even function, so x of minus k looks identical to x of k, and then I'll shift it by n steps, and that puts what was at 0 to be located at time n, and then the tail edge here goes from time minus 5 to time n minus 5, and the leading edge goes from time 5 to time n plus 5. So this is x of n minus k. Now we're going to take different values of n and take the product of this times h of k and evaluate our convolution sum. So I'm going to start with n equals minus 9, and in that case x of n minus k goes from minus 14 to minus 4, and it's 0 thereafter, well h of k is 1 quarter for k equals 0 and 1, and it's a minus a fourth for k equals 2 and 3. So there's no overlap between the non-zero portions of these two functions, and the product therefore is 0. So when I get to the third step of summing up all the values in the product, that of course is very simple because that's going to give me 0. And you can see that even if n increases to minus 8, that's going to move this edge over 1. And then when n equal, increases to minus 7, minus 6, even at n equals minus 6, there's no overlap between the non-zero portions of these two waveforms, and consequently y of n is going to be 0. So provided n is less than or equal to 6, y of n is 0. So let's move to n equals minus 5. In that case, the leading edge of x of n minus k overlaps with the value at k equals 0 of hk, and the product, therefore, is 1 fourth at k equals 0, and it's 0 elsewhere. And so if I add up all the values in the sequence, I simply get 1 fourth. So y of minus 5 is equal to 1 fourth. Proceeding to n equal minus 4, in this case, the first two values on the leading edge of x of n minus k overlap with h of k, and the product is going to be 1 fourth for k equals 0 and k equals 1. And then when I add all these values up, I end up with 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, or 1 half. Now I'm not going to do every one of these, 
let's just skip ahead to where n equals 0. In this case, I've shifted this x of n minus k to be centered on 0, and there's overlap between all the non-zero values of h of k and the non-zero values of x of n minus k, so my product looks just like h of k, and when I sum up the values here, I've got 1 fourth plus 1 fourth minus a fourth minus a fourth, I get exactly 0, and of course this would have happened if n was at minus 1, because then the leading edge would be here at 4. It also would have happened if n was at minus 2. But we can graph our results, and so up to this point where we have up to n equals 0, we have 1 fourth when n is minus 5, 1 half when n is minus 4, 1 fourth when n is minus 3, 0 then for n equals minus 2, minus 1, and 0. And then of course that's going to continue as I shift this signal x of n minus k further to the right, I'll keep getting zero until this trailing edge starts to move into the middle of h of minus k. So let's jump ahead. Here's the case where n is equal to 6, and you can see that the trailing edge of x of n minus k now overlaps with at time k equals 1, and so the product of these two gives me 1 fourth at k equals 1, minus a fourth at k equals 2 and 3, and zeros everywhere else. So if I sum up all the values in this, I get 1 fourth minus a fourth minus a fourth, and I get y of 6 is minus 1 fourth. So I've graphed those extra zero values that we didn't look at, and now here are the value for n equal to 6. And you can continue to go through this process, and one thing that you note is that once n gets greater than or equal to 9, then this trailing edge no longer overlaps with h of k, the non-zero portion, and the product goes back to zero again. And that's going to hold true no matter how far I slide x of n minus k to the right, in other words, how, no matter how big n gets. And so I'm going to have y of n becomes zero whenever n is greater than or equal to 9. My result, I've only shown the values between minus 9 and 10 here, but you can see that we had some activity occurring when the leading edge passed through this non-zero portion of h of k. We get some more activity occurring when the trailing edge passed through the non-zero portion of h of k. And to the left, for n less than minus 5, we had no overlap, and so it was 0. The same thing happens to the right for n greater than or equal to 9. And in these values in the middle here, we have x of n minus k completely overlaps with the non-zero portion of h of k, and those happen to sum to 0 because h of k has two positive and two equal negative values in it.